and a good day to everyone, wherever you are. This is the beauty of internet. This is called The Lighter Side with me, Dr. Ortiz, and it is a lighter view on a very heavy topic. So we try to make it fun and interactive. Today, uh, I don't have an interview, but I actually have a surgery and a live surgery and an explanation on what is the improved gastric sleeve. That's what we're going to talk about today. And obviously, we can always improve upon what we've all, we're already doing in surgery, especially in medicine. As you know, medicine does dramatically change over time. And with 25 years of experience here at OCC, we've learned a couple of things, uh, 24,000 patients plus. Uh, but before we do anything, go ahead and like us, share us, follow us, do the whole uh, hokey pokey. And because uh, this video might end up in the right hands, meaning that we're all about metabolic wellness and health uh, through not just weight loss surgery, but through nutrition, as you will know if you follow our series. We're a complete program. Uh, we not only offer surgery, we offer non-surgical weight loss devices. And in fact, the most important thing we offer is knowledge, knowledge about what you uh, we should be following as advice for nutrition and for uh, metabolic wellness. We're going to use that term a lot. And it basically means how to keep yourself away from being that 70% of the population that dies from a chronic disease, all related to nutrition. So anyways, going back to the topic today, uh, what is the improved gastric sleeve? So let me start off by showing you um, some slides. And uh, we're going to start off with the slides. Let me see. Bear with me because I'm a one man show here. All right. Play on this iPad. All right. Cool. Now we've got that. And then we're going to do that. And we're going to cut. Okay. So this is the IGS, the improved gastric sleeve. How did we end up with this term? Well, basically, uh, it's the keywords that people would. Uh, love to follow. It's uh, something that everyone desires. Would you like the regular or would you like the improved? That's how McDonald's made us fat, right? Would you like regular fries or would you like them large? Well, we, we've got a better surgery for you, which is going to make you smaller, right? So anyways, uh, the improved gastric sleeve, that's uh, the, it's in fact, a, and it's in the trademarks office right now. We have a temporary trademark on it. And what is it? Well, it's basically uh, the improved gastric sleeve is basically a normal gastric sleeve, which is good. Well, we went one step ahead and we made it into a great procedure. And let's talk about why uh, a normal sleeve is good. Because it works. And most of the folks that have had weight loss surgery know that uh, uh, people that have had weight loss surgery, gastric sleeves, they work and they've got very good results and people take notice and then they start investigating and they end up having surgery as well. So it has its, its, its good uh, side. Um, it's a simple procedure. It's pretty straightforward. It basically makes your stomach smaller. In the right hands, it's a great procedure. It's a safe procedure. So it's extremely important that uh, when you're looking for weight loss surgery, you decide upon a group that uh, or a facility an organization that is going to provide something which is time proven an organization that is well established don't go shopping for prices all right so let's go for the other thing uh, a normal sleeve what's the bad about it well everyone knows that uh, there can be complications and the complications can be severe so it's extremely important Complications and and let me and let me let me just pause right there. It's not just complications. Oh, it, it was the surgeon's fault or it was a stapler's fault, etc. There's a combination of responsibility. One of the most important responsibilities to understand that excess weight, obesity, metabolic syndrome, high blood pressure, high blood sugar—it's a disease. And as physicians, our last, uh, the least of our goals is to hurt you. We want to help you, and we do it through modern techniques, and, and in this case, it's surgery. 
but it's a combination of both things, what you bring to the table as a patient and what I can do for you. So I don't take patients that are very, very high risk simply because I can't control that risk in the operating room. I can't do it. What I do uh, perform is those patients that are extremely high risk, I will treat them and uh, basically um, control their risks before they travel by losing weight, by metabolic uh, conditioning, et cetera, et cetera. But when they travel and we finally have the surgery, well, it becomes uh, a, a much better outcome. So anyways, let's go back to, and right now I wanna show you a live video of a surgery that's going on. And this is what's called micro calibration. So what you're seeing is a stomach that has been shrunk in size. And I'm gonna show you a video of what that looks like right now. So let me do this and we're gonna to cut to that. And that's your stomach, it's a large stomach. And then we go ahead and staple. And then that would be the surgery. But we go a step ahead and we micro calibrate. What does that do? It makes your stomach much the, the residual stomach, the sleeve, it makes it much more regular. It seals the staple line. As you can see, that needle right there is going from one side to another, but uh, the um, infolding the staple line, relieving pressure or tension from that staple line because it's being inverted back into the lumen of the stomach and in towards itself. And what it does, it seals, it calibrates, it reinforces. And this is what happens uh, when the surgery takes an extra step. This is why we call it the improved gastric sleep. And if we go back to the image of the video, what you're gonna see is that it not only starts with just simple stapling across the dotted line. This is extremely important to see. These are the diameters of the calibration tubes. You can see a dime is 50 French. So we calibrate on a 32 French tube. How does that look like? Well, it looks like the following. A tube is inserted down the stomach. And then once it's inserted down the stomach, we're going to staple across the, well, not across, parallel to that staple line. And then the last part is that we're going to go ahead and suture across that stomach so we can actually get a much tighter, as you can see in this image, a much tighter, a much tauter, a much nicer, much more regular gastric sleeve. So going back to the surgery, you can see here that we're finishing off this part of this last part of the gastric sleeve. And we call it improved gastric sleeve, and I'm gonna go back to the slides in a second, but I wanted you to see this video simply because, well, it takes an extra time and an extra, it's an extra challenge. You need talented hands to be able to do this. As you can see, these are talented hands. And ultimately what we're trying to do is we're trying to add to this procedure more safety, more security, more reliability, better weight loss, more resilience, more durability. And there goes that tube, that calibration tube. You just saw it removed. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a flat tire test. So we're gonna block the outlet of that new stomach and we're gonna flood that abdomen with liquid. There we go. And we're gonna keep on flooding until that new sleeve is submerged. And then we're gonna blow air through that tube that's inside the esophagus, right in the inlet of the stomach. So that new sleeve is going to blow up, blow, blow up in a sense, meaning inflate, not blow up as in an explosion. And uh, what's gonna happen is that we're gonna look for bubbles. Now, if there was a, a defect in the staple line, we would immediately see it. Uh, so right now we're about to ask the anesthesiologist to blow some air through that tube 
and he just did right now and we're going to see that whole thing inflate there we go that's inflated beautiful and there's no bubbles there so bait see that see how it popped up uh, up so that's the new stomach that stomach is much smaller around 80 percent smaller than a normal stomach and it does a lot of cool things anyways let's go back to the slides where we were at and like i was saying let's go very quickly to the slides and what is the objective well the objective here is to improve upon the benefits while reducing the undesirables uh, do we get improved weight loss yes we do how do we do that uh, we do that by microcalibration. the microcalibration is something you were seeing right now during the life surgery which basically means you can staple across the dotted line but if you microcalibrate, it means that you're adhering that stomach and calibrating it much more intimately to that calibration tube, which means that you create a much more trustworthy uh, final uh, gauging of that stomach. So microcalibration is extremely important. And in this slide, we will see that uh, it's not only about losing weight, but keeping it off. And the new IGS creates a more um, durable surgery by reinforcing, of course, that, that wall and microcalibrating micro the sleeve uh, with a double buttress technique, which you guys have all, all heard of. Now, can we improve upon the recovery as well? Well, yes, uh, dramatically improving by the double seal over the staple line, which creates a leak proof barrier a second leak proof barrier as long as the tissue is healthy we can anchor on that tissue and create a second line i mean and you guys know that probably that's why you use ziploc because it has two seals two seals are better than one and we started off adding that second seal just for security but we found out that it was also resilient which means that you all, guys all know that our weight loss patients do really well and they keep their weight off many years after surgery and online you're finding a lot of uh, other uh, same similar surgery similar sleeves that are not the improved variety actually regain the weight in a couple of of years the other thing is the fundic anchoring technique and that's extremely important because that's the part that prevents the sleeve from uh, herniating and I, i'm going to stop right here and let you guys know sleeves and, and let me show you a, a quick image of a sleeve mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay we're gonna see this and we actually have some questions online but right now we are going to send you to this image and you can see that blue tube that's the esophagus and then you can see the stomach and that's a new sleeve that's the end result you were seeing right now in surgery that highest part of the stomach looks exactly the same diameter as that blue tube, which is called the esophagus. So the stomach and esophagus end up being the same size. No wonder sleeves slip up into the chest. And when a sleeve slips up into a chest, they get heartburn. So what have we done? We've created a design of a surgery that's called the fundic anchoring technique. So we do two, three things with uh, the gastric uh, sleeve. The improved gastric sleeve basically improves upon the normal procedure by creating a double buttress technique, microcalibration, a leak proof feel, uh, uh, a leak proof second seal, a resilient seal, and then we anchor that highest part of the stomach so we don't get herniations. If we don't get herniations, then we don't get acid heartburn and that's one of the most important things now i'm not going to say not everybody is going to experiment it because the size of the stomach per se is going to cause symptoms but we don't get severe uh heartburn like many patients that have hiatal hernia so what are we doing we're preventing the sleeve from slipping up into the chest that's how we've improved upon this procedure we've made it better by listening to the results globally and using our accumulated experience to provide the best surgical option. Um, and last but not least, then the new AGS, 
uh, as we were saying, prevents acid reflux by preventing herniated sleeves with the fundic anchoring technique. So what is the result? The result is the improved gastric sleeve is more durable weight loss because it's reinforced. It has less complications, yes, because you have a second uh, seal that prevents um, or that keeps the ju stomach juices inside. It's, it's, the second seal is, makes it not just uh, a better seal, it makes it more durable. Obviously less hernias with the fundic anchoring technique, less reflux, of course, quick recovery, quicker recovery, and healthy, happy patients. And again, I'm gonna show you this video, which is the normal gastric sleeve would basically be stapling across the dotted line and we would call it a day. But we've improved upon that by, first of all, using a dynamic calibration technique. We use a certain amount of calibration, which is 32 French, and we use a dynamic calibration tube that not only lies there uh, without uh, mobilization, it actually measures on a computer what exactly we're doing. So we're not guessing. And then we take care of the fundus, the highest part of the stomach, so it doesn't slip back up into the chest. And most importantly, we anchor that part back into the stomach, back into the abdomen where the stomach should be residing. So we prevent that heartburn. And last but not least, we microcalibrate. And of course, we always test at the end of every surgery with a barium swallow. See, you can see right there on the screen how the barium is going down and showing you how the uh, stomach is basically uh, intact, but much smaller. And people like to see that because they're so excited when they see that their stomach is extremely small. So uh, having said that, that is the new IGS. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move towards some questions from the audience. Um, and the first question is, why does it take so long to get surgery in the US versus OCC? Also, how many days do I need to plan to be off work? Uh, so why does it take so long? I'll tell you this, the problem with the US healthcare system, and it is a problem, most everybody knows, it's a broken uh, system. It's a broken system that relies on uh, health insurance coverage, gambling, that the cost of your care is gonna be less than the cost, than the amount that you've paid them for their service. Catch my drift, it's, it's legalized gambling. In other words, I have all this universe of patients I'm, or people that I've insured, and I better make some money off of that. And how do I do it? Well, by cutting uh, the ability or by being very judicious about who I provide care to and the cost of the care I provide them to. If I was sick, I would like them to spend 100% of the money I've given them and then much more. So that system per se is, is, is not a, the ideal system. Uh, and because it's too expensive to cover it out of pocket, well, people look at other options and we're obviously one of the options. In Mexico, the healthcare system is different, but in the United States, it's all based on health insurance and health insurance is gonna basically send you to wherever it's cost effective for them. That's, and of course, it's an overloaded system. So there's thousands of patients, patients in line. Here, what we've done is we've diminished the cost, made it affordable. We're not cheap by any means. We're the highest priced center here because we started doing surgery 25 years ago. And then all these mom and pop shops uh, basically uh, um, uh, popped up and, and they're competing with price. So I always get the question, why are you guys so expensive? I'm not even gonna answer. Do your homework. If you think you're worth a lot less than what you're already getting here, you're saving 50 or more percent from the transition from having surgery in the States into Mexico, and you still wanna save some more, eh. I, I always tell patients, do your homework, research. There's a reason why people come to certain places and have good results and go to others and, and do some more gambling. But anyways, let's go for some more questions. There's a, a question from Janice and she says, is there a follow-up procedure like the barium swallow to see if I have stretched my pouch? 
I'm 140 days out and I'm noticing that I'm able to eat more. All right. Eating more is good because you can't live off a couple of spoonfuls a day. Having said that, the idea is that you eat more of what we recommend you eat. We're all about decarbing you, detoxing you, and replenishing your gut bacteria. Decarbing you meaning don't eat carbs. Don't eat processed foods. Keep away from carbs. Good carbs are basically leafy greens and vegetables that grow above ground. And uh, that's about it. Everything else should be protein and fat. We've got a very, very uh, good program. Now, what we also have is we have uh, Lucia, which is our team leader for nutrition and metabolic wellness, who has, a, who has this program to reset that pouch. Some of us are going the, have strayed from the path. And unfortunately, when you stray from the path, your uh, sleeve can actually stretch. And what are we trying to do? Reset that pouch. So if you're feeling that, immediately contact our nutrition team and they will get you on a program, which basically does that. It resets your pouch, but it not just does really just reset your pouch. It resets your whole metabolism. Because you have to remember, if you start straying from the past, usually it's because of carbs. Carbs crave carbs, and then that's when you're overdoing it, and it ultimately ends up in stretching the pouch and failure. And then you have to come back in for a touch-up. Uh, another question is... Uh, from Maggie, is it true that carbonation will stretch out the sleeve? Uh, no and yes. Look, you're going to feel uncomfortable if you're using carbonation, especially during the first number of months after surgery. So keep away from it. If you're already good and well and you've normalized your life and carbonation doesn't bother you, all right. But early on, carbonation has CO2 in it, and it's going to either going to come up or go out the other way. So you're going to be uncomfortable, especially if it's going out the other way, you're going to be bloated and feeling extremely uncomfortable. And in certain times, it can actually cause, cause nausea and vomiting. And remember that slipping of the sleeve up into the chest? That's a no-no. That, that can cause severe heartburn and require an additional surgery to fix it. Um, there's another question from Whitney. With the extra enforcement, does it make it harder to eventually eat solid foods after the liquid uh, diet? Kinda, yeah. Uh, we've reinforced the stomach, and that's why you want to progressively go from liquids to semi-liquids to solids. Now, everyone is different. I have patients that uh, can go immediately and never feel a symptom. But the, the reasoning is this. We only have a few tools to apply to a universe of humans. So what do we do? We found the best combination of calibration, stapling, over-suturing, strengthening, that leads to a more or less spectacular result. Some a little bit less, some a little bit more, but ultimately that's as much as we can do to provide a generalized treatment for everybody. That's why we trademark the procedure because we don't want other surgeons coming in trying to copycat YouTube videos. This is not about this is about providing health, and the only way to do it is by accumulating data over the years and being able to apply it to, to uh, uh, surgery and health. All right. Can I still schedule surgery if I was recently diagnosed with gastritis? And that comes from Brandy. Brandy, everyone has gastritis at one point in time. So, yeah, definitely. There's very few things that can preclude you from surgery. So that's basically why we have our team of experts online. They're going to receive your call. They're going to ask you a lot of questions. We're going to review your whole, uh, um, let's say, wellness profile, your health profile. And then we're going to decide if you're a candidate or not. In general, 99.9% of the people that call us are candidates for surgery, including the ones that are not overweight, because this is a really cool fact. Did you know that 80% of the people that are obese or overweight have metabolic syndrome? In other words, they're sick. But there's 20% that aren't. They're not sick and they're fat. And the skinny ones are blaming those guys for being sick. And then what happens is that the skinny people, 30% of the skinny people also have metabolic syndrome. And they're blaming the fat people. In fact, there's more thin people that are sick than fat people that are sick. So there you go. Where am I going with this? That this is not just weight loss surgery. It's called metabolic 
uh, surgery, which means that it's going to impact your triglycerides, your cholesterol, your sleep apnea. It's going to impact your blood sugar, your blood pressure, your insulin, et cetera. And that's extremely important because those diseases are the ones that lead to up to 70% of the deaths in the adult population in the United States and everywhere else in the world, which leads to cardiovascular disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, uh, dementia, stroke, all these diseases come from this seed, which is metabolic syndrome. All right. And then Corina asks, uh, had a gastric sleeve surgery in 2000. It worked great, helping me get my weight down. And it was a great experience. Uh, they explained how this is just a tool and not a fix it. Reminded uh, me positive thoughts are must. Yes, good girl. I love that. Yeah, it's a tool. And, and really, because it's a tool, look, you can blame me 25 years ago when I started this, we knew very little about surgery, in fact, and, and the little we knew, well, we would do the surgery and then we would send our patients on the way and I felt like I was missing something. So I finally did what I thought was important, which is to research a lot more and say, I got to give these patients not just a tool, but a guidebook. And that's when our nutrition team started doing a lot of research with us. And then this whole new movement around the world is now focusing on what you stimulate with what you eat. It's all a, it all has to do with how you stimulate your insulin. Nothing more, nothing less. It's not about eating this, eating that. It's, how, it's about how you stimulate your insulin. If you let your insulin rest, you'll become more insulin sensitive. So insulin sensitive, meaning that you won't need as much insulin, produce much, much insulin, because the more insulin you produce, the more you trap that fat in your body. That's why we're all fat. Um, I'll put it to you in another way. 30 years ago, blood sugars in the general population were at this level. And you look at them today and they're still at this level. And you're like, oh, well, nothing has changed. Well, if you look at insulin, insulin level was over here. And 30 years later, it's four times higher, which means that what we're eating is stimulating much more insulin. As we stimulate insulin, we trap more fat and keep it in our body. So the only way to do it is by diminishing the amount of insulin we have so we can become more insulin sensitive. And the only way to do it is by intermittent fasting, low carb, high fat diets, and of course, weight loss surgery. But you guys who have had surgery with us get the whole program and you get all three. And I'm going to go with one last question because probably we're out of time because I didn't have somebody to be telling me that if we're out of time or not. But uh, a comment from Kim. She says, hi, was there in November, best decision I ever made. Yes, and I'm going to forewarn everybody that hasn't done it. The only regrets you're going to have is not doing it sooner. I, 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 I want to close off by saying uh, we've been doing this for so many years, and I'm passionate about what we do. I'm passionate about health, and I'm passionate about seeing spectacular results. Um, that's why we, every single patient, we take the utmost care to understand if there is a disease involved and how we can uh, prepare that patient to have the most spectacular result. Some patients take longer, some patients uh, are quick or recoveries, but ultimately most patients are walking around a couple of hours after the surg surgery and go back home. They, they're going to get our pre-op and post-op program, which is delivered via email on a video uh, platform, uh, three minute videos, small snippets every day, telling you what is gonna happen at that specific moment in your weight loss journey. And we do it because we want you to feel accompanied. We're always here, we're all, always available. We always answer our emails and our cell phones. Um, and COVID, this pandemic has proven us uh, right. There was always questioning about telemedicine, telehealth, and the effectiveness of it. Well, the whole world has now turned into health uh, uh, or online health. So basically, we've been doing this for 20 years in online health, almost that much time. And we know it's not as effective. It's even better because you're in constant communication with us. And at the end of the day, most of the things or intervening that we have to do or adjustments we have to do, we can do them online via email or via telephone to get you back on track. 
I really dislike it when we lose a patient to follow up. And then when somebody isn't having the best results and then they're going to start feeling this, um, this feeling of failure and then it sinks in and then they start hiding and retracting from being followed up. And by the time we get to them, they've regained the weight. So that's why it's extremely important to be in contact with our patients. That's all the time we have for today. If you like this video, like I said, like, follow, share, uh, throw it around. This is important information. And if you have any other additional questions, just post them online. We usually get them, our producers, and then we uh, answer them the following uh, 